Welcome back to the lab folks. Today we're just going to do a very small little mailbag episode of a, a few items that came in. So I'd like to have a look at those. And uh, here's the first one. I guess that means something to somebody. Okay, I know what these are. These are really, really, really cheap. Uh, desoldering pins, tubes. That one there is like a punch, like an awl. And the rest of these things are stainless steel tubes and they're used for desoldering. I guess the idea is you put them down over the pin, melt the solder, and then this will go down in between the pin and the in the trace. And because it's stainless steel, the solder won't adhere to it. And then you take the iron off it, let it cool down, and then it should be completely and utterly unsoldered. Uh, so I guess the idea here is you, you get the smallest one of these that will go over the pin of the device. I think that one's the smallest one in this case. That gives it the biggest chance of being able to get through. Yeah, that one won't go over the pin. But this one will. That gives it the best chance of getting down through the hole. Now, these are plated through holes. I imagine this would work a whole lot better with something that's just a, a strictly um, single-sided PC board. And that's kind of why I got them for working on older pieces of equipment. So I'm going to practice with this and uh, come back and show you guys how to use it properly at some point in time. But I think they're going to be very handy, especially for those, you know, those older single-sided PCBs where you're not trying to deal with solder that goes down through a plated through hole. They may not be ideal for that. These are fairly enough, fairly easy enough to unsolder anyway. Uh, these modern boards, because those traces are glued on, they're pretty good. Anyway, uh, I think they'll come in handy if I can learn how to use them. All right, what do we have here? I was afraid of cutting into something. Ooh, cut right through that one. Okay, yeah, so these are another Ali. I think everything here is an AliExpress purchase. Uh, kind of gone crazy. What these are, are um, the connection hoops, so like test point hoops, similar to those, uh, similar function to those little test uh, points I showed you before, but these are rather sturdy, so they're, um, they're on point 0.1 inch centers, uh, two apart, so they're point 0.2 inches apart, or point 0.508 millimeters. So you make an allowance on your PC board for these, or even on a Vero board or something like that. And then you can connect up power or oscilloscopes or whatever to them. So they're, they could be, you know, they're, they're rather decent size, heavy duty. It can be used for quite a bit of current if you're powering something up. Um, or like I said, just to hang a scope lead off of the, you could hang multiple scope leads and digital multimeter leads, alligator clips and everything off these. So I'm going to try to incorporate these into one of the next projects I build so we can see how, how well they work. I think they're going to work out uh, pretty good. And uh, an alternative to those, those much smaller little test points for when you need a, a little bit more robustness. Okay, here's a bigger one. And I think I know what this one is. I'm quite excited about this. Yep, this is it. So what this is... If you're on AliExpress from time to time, you might have seen this before. It's a calculator kit. And uh, it has some special functions built in, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
particularly for electronics people. So this could be a very nice little kit. I've been sorting in a whole bunch of uh, push-button switches. It looks like a fairly quick and easy build. You also got three transistors and a very large IC, probably a microcontroller programmed to, to do all the, the heavy lifting. Display connector, battery holders. I wonder if there's a way to get uh, an external supply in this or to even mount a, a bigger battery into it something with a little bit more oomph yeah so it uses one of these standard 1602 LCD displays very nicely uh, done little sheet here it's all in pretty good English I like it when they take the time to translate uh, things properly and some kits, it's just, it's just crazy what they give you. Um, yeah, a little tutorial on soldering. Not that these really help that much. I mean, it's, it, it really is a skill that you have to develop by doing it. Make mistakes. Make lots of mistakes. All right. And uh, here's the case. Oh, there's the display. Even comes with the batteries. Oh, nice. I'd rather um, try to get like a, a proper decent sized lithium cell in there or two and put a charge port on it. Yeah, it's just your very standard 1602 LCD display. I suppose I, I have dozens of those around here, but I don't like the color of that one. I can put my own in. Okay, there's the, the case. All the additional parts in here. Microcontroller and a socket. Battery holders, connectors, resistors. You know, how far up does the PC board fit off the bottom? Not very far up. So I'm imagining you could get something. You could get batteries that would fit into that. I guess this uh, kind of fits up at an angle like that. Yeah. This is going to be a nice little kit. I'm going to enjoy building this. Maybe even a, the battery pack could fit in here behind the display. So I don't think these two little batteries are going to last long running a big microcontroller like this and a display like this. But I imagine these are just lithium cells, so they're, yeah, standard. Uh, CR2032. Yeah, this is going to be a fun build. So my next uh, kit of the month, I'm not going to dip into the kit drawer. I'm just going to build this one up. Okay, and here's the last item. It came packaged with something that I needed to get uh, needed to get out and use. It got nothing to do with the lab anyway. So an S1 energy socket. This is the uh, US plug uh, wipe by version. And what is a S1 energy socket? Well, it's a power meter. Here's the power meter. Get that thing off it. Okay, so this is it. It comes with just uh, quality assurance. I feel very assured. It's going to be high quality. This is an A torch. It doesn't say anywhere on the manual, but it does up there. I've seen A torch products. They actually they got some pretty neat products. I've got some stuff I might be uh, might be interested in, in picking up. They've got like a, a, a bench version of this, which might be really handy. One of these days, maybe. Okay, let's see. Uh, the English is pretty good. Not quite as good as uh, in that calculator kit, but it is pretty good. 
This feature comes from a real story. A worker who travels through the curse who forgot to turn off the air conditioner at home. Oh, even got little stories in it. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, let's see if it's um, intuitive. There's a lot of instructions to go through there. I don't want to have to go through them all right now, but someday I will turn it on. Now, we're supposed to be able to scan that QR code there, and it's supposed to run off and get an application for us. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, it looks like it's finished downloading. So we'll open it up. You can press this button here to get into the extensive mode here. Oh, okay, so now the applications come up, but wow, they're only using that amount of the screen. I guess this application was actually designed for a phone, and they just decided we'll just put a tiny little version of it on the iPad, which is, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter which way I hold this, it doesn't affect it. Very unsophisticated. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do, I have it, an old TV here uh, of the CRT variety, which should draw a bit of current. So we'll plug that in here. Now it says that we got 118.87 volts, which is uh, you know fairly consistent for what we have around here. 59.97 hertz. And all that stuff is kind of coming through over here as well. Data refresh interval set for 60 seconds. I might want something a little bit lower than that. So we could set that down, let's say to 30 seconds. Confirm that. And now we'll turn on this TV. And it's consuming about 0 0.005 kilowatt hours so far. A power factor of 0.68. Now I notice, I don't know, can, can you guys see this? I notice the power factor is not coming through on the app for some reason. Everything else seems to be coming through just fine. Oh, power just jumped up. So it's, yeah, it took 30 seconds before I went out and got that information. So, okay. Um, let's increase the refresh rate down to 10 seconds. Honest. Oh. Uh, moved again, but anyway, so okay, so some of these buttons here. I, I did read what they do like this will turn it off Auto and you can set up all that in a menu uh, Which I'm not going to go into right now. I, I just read it very briefly there and On so of course our TV is one of these auto off things the power feather won't come back on We'll turn it back on again, so we could put it into manual mode here by pressing the off switch Except for it didn't go to off, it went to on. All right, let's try that again. So I guess it waits to 13 seconds before it communicates back out to the device. Uh, but it could also be my finger problem. Okay. Uh, are you sure you want to turn the switch off? Yes, I am. Okay. It's not listening. I, I have to say the the. Okay, there it turned off. I have to say the response to the application is 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 dismal. So it's uh, it's not the greatest app. I was hoping it'd be a little bit better than that, but I mean it's going to be very useful just the way it is. I had intended to use the app to be able to monitor things from a, a distance up in my office or somewhere else, and I'll probably be okay for that, but. Uh, you wouldn't want to do a lot of really uh, complex things. So, okay, we'll turn it back on again. See, I don't even know if it's my fingers are having trouble here or just not responding. Okay, it's done. Okay, well, that's, that's that looks a lot better on here. And let's see how it how it responds. 
So let's go, let's increase the data rate here, see if we can get down to nine or 10 seconds, or somewhere about there. Okay, now turn on that TV there. 10 seconds later, we get the information. That's good. Well, it even 10 seconds. That's good. Um, so we're getting all the right kind of information. The voltage on the line has gone up a little bit in the last little while, eh? Now let's see about uh, responses with turning on and off. Oh yeah, much better. Yeah. Okay, that's better. I think I'll probably just leave the app on my phone and uh, not bother with the iPad. But, uh, all right, it, it looks like it's going to be a handy little device. I look forward to putting it to some real use. Uh, one of the things that I, I might just leave it here, I'll, I'll build a little jig for it, just leave it here to test things out. More than likely my, uh, my main use for it. And if it turns out to be a really good device, I might use it for such things like auto shutting off my soldering irons. I don't know if, if you have a problem with that, but sometimes I... I completely forget to shut off my soldering iron and I come back two days later and I need to put a new tip in the thing. Let me know in the comments if that happens to you, if you have a solution to it that an old guy like me can deal with. But yeah, I sometimes leave my irons on. It's not a great practice. All right. Thank you very much for coming out to view this. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.